What's going on? What's going on? What's going on? What's going on? Thank y'all for, for the like so far. Hit the like button. It's going to be a great live today. Let's go. Supposed to be seen, the sky's not supposed to touch the ground, and a square's not supposed to be round. The moon's not supposed to touch the sun, and a two is not supposed to be a one. That the heart's not supposed to weigh a ton, and forever's not supposed to be done. Winter's not supposed to come in June. Now I am not supposed to have the blues. There are so many things that are not supposed to be, except you and me. There are so many things that are so that are not supposed to be, except you and me. Nice not supposed to be long. Yeah. Nice not supposed to be long. Yeah. No one is supposed to be alone. Understanding is not supposed to be confused. And the wind is not supposed to lose. Like fire is not supposed to freeze. But like joy is not supposed to grieve. Like you are not supposed to leave. What I said I'm not supposed to mean. He is not supposed to have your heart. Maybe we are not supposed to be apart. There are so many things that are not supposed to be said. You and me. There are so many things that are not supposed to be said. There are so many things that are not supposed to be said. It seems just like no season's changing. This earth with no creation, no oh, heart, no feelings, or a sickness without healing, just like a Hey, 
baby and except you and me Shout out to everybody that's here so far. Go ahead and spread the word. Spread the word. We're going to talk about just how dangerous this Rico thing is. Y'all see what the title is? The title. Oh, my God. Just how dangerous is this Rico act? Thank you for the one person that dislike it. You make me feel complete. All right. Um, sure, Zay, you got it. Um, let's keep it a buck. Hold on, hold on. Let's take care of this real quick. There you go, Zay. Um, who else? Let's take care of this real quick. Uh, faces. Is, yeah, she. Okay. Cool, cool. Mama T, 0307, how you doing? The one, what's going on? Who else? Chris Starry, what's going on? Man, look. I was blessed by Chris Terry, man. Um, y'all that don't know, real quick before we get into this Rico thing, because we're going to talk about why certain people are going around saying what we're saying about this Rico thing. But before we get into this, right, Dream Team's own Chris Terry blessed us with a hot song. I I do believe that, you know, whenever we do something good over here and whenever we got something going on, we have to support our own. So real quick, before we get into this, I want y'all to look at this right here real quick. Um, let's listen to what our brother have to talk about. All right. I'm gonna backtrack it. I'm pause it. Let's go. Candy World, hey! Only God can judge me 
Hey, shout out to my boy Chris Starry. Oh my God, I'm gonna pump this. Mama Belinda and Huff in the building. Let's get them people in here. Yo, if y'all feeling this, put hell yeah in the chat. Jesus. Something like a superstar. Something, something, because you know I'm rated R. Man, I'm going to learn that joint. I don't know. I'm going to have to talk to Chris Starry real quick and see if I can get that to be my theme song. I don't know. I don't know. You know, I got to talk to my guy and see, see if he allow me to make that be my theme song when I come on. If so, then I'm going to go and get, you know, some stuff done, get some tracks and stuff done. We're going to get it in. But look at this. Hell yeah. Hell yeah. Hell yeah. Y'all keep bringing them. If y'all feeling that, say hell yeah. Say hell yeah if y'all feeling that. If y'all feeling that, say hell yeah, because I'm feeling it. And I'm going to tell you, I'm going to talk to my boy offline. If he can okay it, y'all going to know when I come online, because y'all going to hear that, like I'm rated Man, I'm feeling that joint. That joint, that joint, a monster. I wish I was a DJ. I'd bring that remix. Something. I don't know, man. I'm, I'm kind of feeling like a remix, and you know what I mean. I'm trying to see, I don't know. Trying to see if a certain person can put some vocals on that. I don't know. But look, I'm gonna talk to Chris Starry about. Look at that. Look at that. Much love from Dream Team. We are so talented over here that we do not have to resort to arguing with people who have no talent. We ain't gonna do that. But we here for Robert. So let's go ahead and let's break down this Rico thing. Here's the big thing, Rico. All right, as I was looking at the Rico, right, I pulled up three things with Rico in it. Now, now y'all hear people trying to implicate people into this and people into that. You know, I'm going to say this. Some people are here just for Robert alone. Some people got caught up in a hype. Some people got caught up in the hype. But a lot of people is here for Robert. And some people just got caught. So what I'm going to do is this right here. I'm going to break down Rico. And we're going to all break down together. The first, the first one is, what is Rico? What is the Rico Act and how does it work? All right, the Dreaded Racketeer Influence and Corrupt Organizations Act. That's what it means. Racketeer, Influence, and, cor and Corrupt Organizations Act. So this right here, when you see this, you now know that you can't have just one person as a RICO. One person cannot be a RICO. Hold on. So one person cannot be a RICO, but it says more commonly known as RICO is an act that was passed back in 1970 
and struck fear into mobsters nationwide, especially mob bosses. So with this going on and with this being a definition, why is Robert charged with Rico? Because we all know that Robert is not a mob boss. We all know that he's not a mobster. So why would you slap Rico on Robert Sylvester Kelly? Let's continue reading. Until the 1970s, a mob boss was untouchable. But with the introduction of Rico, it allowed them to be tried for crimes which they ordered others to do or assisted them in doing. This act ultimately closed a loophole in the system that allowed a person who instructed someone else to be exempt from the trial because they did not actually commit the crime personally. <laughs> Listen, the law was initially set up to target the mafia, but since then has become more widespread. By 1972, a total of 33 states had already adopted this new law. The RICO Act defines 33 offenses as constituting racketeering, including gambling, murder, kidnapping, arson, drug dealing, bribery, embezzlement of union funds, mail and wire fraud. Stop right there. Now we understand why Robert got hit with the RICO Act. Because when you go look at one of his charges and a superseding indictment, they gave him the Man Act. The Man Act is kidnapping. And then it says to name to name but a few that are included on the list. Over the years, there have been many high profile cases in the news, but from a mafia standpoint, there have been a few major ones to note. For example, did you know that on November 21st, 1980, Genovese crime family boss, Frank, Ter Fra Frank Thierry, was the first mafia boss to be convicted under the RICO Act. During the 1980s and 1990s, federal prosecutors used RICO to bring charges against several mafia members, one, one such case being the famous Mafia Commission trial, which resulted in several top leaders of New York City's five families getting what amounted to life sentences. By the new millennium, RICO cases resulted in virtually all of the top leaders of the New York Mafia being sent to prison. Also, in the mid-1990s, prosecutors used RICO charges to bring down the Lucchis family within an 18-month period. The, this had a dramatic effect on the family, especially the financial side of it, as they controlled many extortion rackets throughout the city. Hmm. There was also the more recent case. There was also the more recent case of Operation Family Secrets in 2005, where 15 Chicago outfit outfit members were all indicted under the law. Even the law themselves couldn't hide from Rico. As in 2000, the LAPD found found themselves as the wrong end of a Rico case. The idea that a police organization could be characterized as a racketeering enterprise shook up City Hall and further damaged the already tarnished image of the LAPD. All right. So with that being said, right? I just seen it. But with that being said, Robert is being charged with Rico. So with... With Robert being charged as Rico, you got to have other people in place because you can't do it by yourself. So with that being said, why is the Rico important and why is it so dangerous? Let's have a call and response. I mean, hey, y'all can put your answers in the chat or y'all can come on or y'all can call in. Why 
is the Rico so dangerous pertaining to Robert Sylvester Kelly? Because I'm going to go here. I have an idea, but I want to see if the Dream Team is all on the same page. Oh, rules for mods don't block nobody. Because this is a learning moment. We all going to learn today. Why is the Rico so dangerous? Or should I say, why is the Rico act so dangerous? What up, Willie? Let me see him get y'all time to get these answers in. Y'all know the calling number, right? Y'all know the calling number. Let me see. Six, seven, eight. I think I know it. Why is the Rico act so dangerous? Okay. Don't 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 block nobody. And everybody coming in, be respectful. Be respectful. If you're not respectful, then you will get blocked. Six, seven, eight. Five, five, two, nine. Okay. Oh, shoot. Hold on. Let's see what y'all say. There we go. Call in number 678-545-2955. The link in number is right there. All right, let's see. Let's be respectful. Nobody get blocked. If you being disrespectful, you will get blocked. And definitely don't be disrespectful to, to the guests. No guests is being disrespected over here. All right, so why is the RICO so important? And why is it so dangerous? I'll start it off. The RICO, to me, is important. Because what they're doing is they're holding Robert to a standard that don't fit him. And I believe that once Robert beats this, at that point, they will no longer be able to hold traveling musicians to a standard of a mob boss. I think they are far fetching. I think they're reaching. And I think. Listen, I think they far fetching. I think they reaching. And I think this is just a way for them to try to flex their muscle for them to say we can touch anybody that we want at any given time. Why is it so dangerous? Because in order for Rico to stick, you don't have to admit to it. As long as they got people around you that's saying, "Okay, he made me do it. He made me do it. He made me do it." You will get hit with Rico charge. They will get hit with conspiracy. You see what I'm saying now? So, so let's see what Miss Ann Huff says. She the first person. She said, "I think the Rico is dangerous because it doesn't take much to obtain it by 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 word of mouth." Wow. 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 We ain't talking about the case, Miss Lady T. Follow us. Followers, we talking about Rico itself. Wow. Wow, that's a good thing, though. Miss Ann, that's a good thing because you don't need much. You don't need much. You don't need much at all. You don't need much. 
Um, anybody else? I want all answers because together we can put out together we can put our heads together and we can figure this thing out. I also have two more tabs that I pulled up. And let me get to it. Rico Law. We're gonna talk about it today. Rico law. The meaning of Rico law. Okay. The meaning of Rico law or the Racketeer Influence and Corrupt Organization Organizations Act is that it is a law that allows authorities to punish offenders engaging in criminal activities, particularly racketeering. For example, RICO law punishes crime bosses who order their sub subordinates to carry out criminal activities for them. Else, these bosses could claim innocence because they technically were not the ones to carry out the crimes. To explore this concept, consider the following RICO law definition. Definition of RICO law, the law that allows the authorities to punish those who are engaging in criminal activities such as racketeering. Origin, October the 15th, 1970. What is RICO law? RICO law, or the Racketeer Influence and Corrupt Organizations Act, is a law that allows the government to punish individuals associated with criminal activity, specifically the leaders of crime organizations. Before RICO law existed, crime bosses will order their will, will, will order their minions wow, to carry out crimes for them and claim innocence if the police found out. Their argument was that technically no one could prosecute them for crimes like murder because they weren't the ones doing the killing. The RICO law made it possible for the police to arrest even the leaders of crime organizations. Initially, the government passed RICO law as a way to control the mafia. However, in recent years, authorities have applied RICO law to more cases, allowing it to have more of a widespread effect. Let's stop right there. Let's stop right there. Now, RICO law, and we just read what it was, right? We just read what it was. And I'm going to put it back up here. I'm going to put it back up here. We just read what it was. So now, now that I've read that, I'm going to ask you another question. And another question goes like this. Why is RICO law so dangerous in the Robert Sylvester Kelly case? Now that y'all know it's designed to punish people. Why is it so dangerous in a Robert Sylvester Kelly case? Let's see if anybody can come up with an answer. Because, see, I'm about to show y'all something that y'all probably missed last night. Let's see. Let's see. Let's see. Let's see. Let's see. Hold on. Let's see. Um, did I get it? Yes, I did. Yes, I did. Yes, I did. I got it. Hold on. I want to show y'all something. Oh, I believe. I want to show you something. I'm going to take the RICO definition down for a second. But I'm going to show y'all this. Let me show you this. There we go. You see, Sharon Wimbush, Miss Sharon Wimbush, have been saying for Don Russell to bring 
Robert things back, right? And you see when she put it up, here's the response that he gave her. And I want y'all to pay attention to it. He said, if you look at the video, uh, the video said, Don Russell, please. She said, please bring everything back before it gets worse. Here's what he say. Why? So your commander and chief, Angelo S. Clary, and his den of thieves can steal them the same way he looted RSK's Trump apartment. Stop right there. If you wasn't there, how do you know his apartment was looted? Make it make sense. Who gave you keys to go back into that apartment after everybody has left? Nobody want to talk about it. Let's go. Um, Hell to the no, no, no. Tell this in a circle. Hold on. Tell this in a circle. That you are referring to file a complaint with Chicago PD. Because this alleged theft did take place in Chicago. And because of the participants, the report will surely make its way to a detective's desk. As a formality, the detective assigned to investigate the alleged theft you are referring to will definitely pay RSK a visit at the MCC. To substantiate the allegation described above in your video. If he cooperate, listen to the key factor word. The key factor word is he. The conjunction is if. The, uh, or the leadoff word is if. So let's go here. If he, meaning Roberts Vesta Kelly, cooperate your defamation of my character. Then and only then will shit get real. Hold on. Then and only then will shit get real. On another note, I see whenever you low life bums, the Clary Knights, want to get your YouTube numbers up, you create false narratives. And as long as you tie my name to it, you get the attention you desperately desire. Pathetic. Shaking my fucking head and laughing my ass off at the same damn time. Keep it up. I'll cash in on it later. Then he got the little smiley face thing. Until then, may your numbers continue to soar at the expense of others. Note, securing RSK's fans early on by posing as one of his supporters was a good move in your effort to control the narratives, but it's but it is not checkmate. Now, this brother talked about narratives, right? And all this going to tie into the Rico. Watch this. He's talking about narratives. So do y'all remember about two and a half years ago when this same brother came out with a narrative that wasn't true? And a narrative went a little something like this. Hello. Hey, are you live? Yep. Uh, out of Rico, and we talking about Don. Okay, how many people you got in your channel? Uh, one oh, one oh three. Okay. Um, what have you said about the Rico? Oh, I was just reading the uh, definitions and everything. And what did you say? Pretty much that the Rico was there to punish crime bosses and different stuff like that. And uh, hold on, let me see. Does it say how many people? 
I didn't get to that part yet. Um, I'm right at what is racketeering activity. Okay. You know, we we coming up to. Do you want me to put you live? And, huh? Do you want me to put you on live or no? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Oh, I thought I was. Okay. Here we go. Hey, everybody. Miss Sharon Wimbush is here with us to this to, and to talk about what she do best, law. Right, <laughs> what I do best, Rob. Uh, hi, everybody. How you doing? Uh, we wanted to talk about uh, the case, the RICO charges, because. You know, there's a lot of back and forth and people are showing support for people who are in the case. And we have to understand very clearly what these charges are. Robert is being charged with some individual stuff, but they're also trying to paint the picture of a criminal enterprise. And you don't have a criminal enterprise unless you have other people doing it with you. One man ain't no enterprise. We heard that a million times this year. <laughs> so uh, <laughs> we, we all should know that by heart now. One man ain't no enterprise. So in order for them to even make that stick, they have to have other people. That's why the the situation in Florida with the car burning up, the Arlon situation, the Russell situation, all of that is being used to paint Rico, to paint criminal enterprise. You don't have an enterprise if it's just you. So they need those other people. If you would not have anybody else on your platform and say we're supporting you we're standing by you you don't do it for one if you're not going to do it for all would you have Richard Arline on there saying you, you support him would you have somebody else on there saying you support them they are using these people to take Rob down they are using these people to show the charges to prove the charges and I am absolutely appalled that people are doing lives, they are in the chat, they are doing their own commentary in support of individuals who are being used to take Robert down. They can't charge Robert with RICO unless they charge Williams, Arline, and Russell. It's not RICO unless we got these individuals. So for people to have him on their channel and have him speaking and Ooh, we support you and we're with you and we know you got Rob's back, all you're doing is tightening his relationship with Robert. You're saying, yes, he does know Robert. Yes, he is close to Robert. Yes, he does have Robert's back. Yes, he will do anything to protect Robert. You're hurting Robert with that. You're saying, you well, read the fucking court documents. Do your homework. Right. Do like Dana just d did and Google what is Rico. What is the law? This is not an emotional case. This is a law-based case. And they're not going to put Robert away based on what's being said on YouTube, how many videos you got, what is your emotional temperature on this. They're going to lock him up based on what they can prove these individuals did. Period. Period. Because anything else is hearsay and conjecture. They have to paint a picture to the jury that this man was, because Robert didn't do the things. Robert is the star. He's on stage. So if they're saying women were transported across state line, they, they have to have somebody that did the transporting. They have to have somebody that booked the airline tickets, that, that picked the female up from the airport, that got the hotel room. That's how you build that case. Everybody has common sense to know Robert didn't do that. So, and, and the same with the Rico. They know Robert didn't do that stuff, but what they have to show is someone acted per his instruction. 
that's how you build the case. So we want to put as much distance. Everybody's yelling. What's the guy's name in Florida? Dana Williams. Uh, uh, Michael Williams. Yeah, everybody's yelling. He didn't even know Michael Williams. He didn't even know Michael Williams. And yet you're saying, oh, Don, you're his manager. Oh, Don, we know you love Robert. Oh, Don, we support you. How retarded is that? You're trying to put distance between him and the Williams guy. You want to make sure that everybody knows Rob didn't know that guy. Yes, that makes sense. You do want to do that. But then you're tying him to Don Russell. Why do you, Why is it that Don Russell came out after all this time? If something happened with his car, he had the police report. The course of action is contact Robert's lawyers. Right. Contact people on the inner circle. There was never a need to go on social media and say that. Why did he do it? Use your common sense. Take me out of the equation. You don't like me. I give zero fucks. Take me out of the equation. Definitely take me out. Yeah, take everybody out of the equation. You say you're here for Robert. Look at the facts. And take Don's name out of the equation. A person that is in the indictment comes on YouTube and says, my car was broken into. This person did it. And uh, I'm here for Rob. Now, Sharon. Yeah. Yeah. Not to cut you off, but they just changed the RICO law. It says Say what? it says a more expansive view holds that in order to be found guilty of violating the of the RICO statute, the government must prove beyond a reasonable doubt one that an enterprise existed, two, That's right. two that the enterprise affected interstate commerce, three. Right. That the defendant was a show what was associated with or employed by the enterprise. Four, that the defendant engaged in a pattern of racketeering activity. And five, that the defendant conducted or participated in the conduct of the enterprise through that pattern of racketeering activity through the commission of at least two acts of racketeering activity as set forth in the indictment. So they don't even need a number now. They just well, need people to got. agree. Don, Don has two. How many was did Richard Arline have? Just one? One, Is it, one major one. Okay, and then how, how many uh, the Williams guy have? Two. Okay, so that's five. So if they can prove five, there's your Rico. Yep. And you said they only have to prove two, right, Dana? Yep. So we can throw Williams out. We can throw our line out. If they can make the two with Don stick, there's your Rico. Or if they can throw one of Don's out and keep one of Don's and one of our lines, there's your Rico. But they got both of Don's recorded. Yeah, so they're they're looking at five. So even if two or three get knocked out, they still have their Rico. So, you know, you got to if you're going to protect Robert, you protect him against all threats, internal and external. And either you're going to help try to secure his um, intellectual property or you're not. Nothing else is relevant. Who show I went on, who Bruce talked to, that's not the fucking point. That's bullcrap. What what did we talk about? What was the the whole topic about? Intellectual property being taken. Focus on that. Focus on that. What are you going to do about that? We're going to throw the most important thing out because you don't like Sharon Wimbush and she don't like you. Let's be clear on that. (laughs) So, uh, you know, you're not here for Robert. You're not here for Robert. You see, Dana and I can come together and have a conversation. Dana and I have not been close throughout this. No. But but when shit comes to, to the fan, he can put his shit to the side. I can put my shit to the side and we can have a conversation. Because at the end of the day, we in the same fight for the same reason. It's not about personalities. It's not about, do I like you? Am I going to come to your rally? Are we going to be on the stripper pole bus? No, I'm not here for that. I don't have to like you and I don't have to like what you do 
but let's roll our sleeves up and get the work done. And even if I don't, I will I work with anybody to help Robert. I'm willing to talk to anybody to work with anybody. Don't ask me if I like you. We ain't got to have that conversation. We're here to do the work. You've worked in offices with people that you didn't necessarily care for, but both of you were paid to do a job. So you worked with that person, you got the job done. This is no different. You don't have to like people to get work done. And you should take the emotion out of it and look at things from an intelligent point of view. Why did Don Russell come out now? Why did he go on those particular channels that he went on? What is it that he's trying to manipulate? Because there's manipulation there. He oh, didn't hold on for a second, Doc. I mean, hold on for a second, Sharon. Hey, babe, check this out. You can go ahead and leave because we ain't reinforcing nobody. We are separating Robert from the people who, who's hurting him. So it's That's evident right. that y'all are here because y'all are Don Russell fans. So this is a non Don Russell page. So Don Russell, see your tail out. Have a nice day. Now go ahead, Sharon. Sorry about that. And how are you for Don Russell when you don't even know who Don Russell is? That part. So what? You've seen his face. You haven't seen my face. That's irrelevant. You've heard my voice. You've seen my channel. You've seen my fight. My behavior tells you who the fuck I am. And I'm not telling you to be against Don. I'm not here to paint that picture. I'm here to say, why would you uh, embrace that relationship when that relationship is being used by the federal government to prove RICO. We're not talking about anything other than the RICO where it comes to Don Russell, Richard Arline, and the Williams guy. Because that's what the is in the federal charges in the indictment. That's it. Now, the intellectual property of R. Kelly's is a separate issue. Either you're going to help locate it, either you're going to report. If you see something trying to be moved, you're going to report if you see stuff on eBay, or you're not. Everything else is irrelevant. If I talk to Larry, I can talk whoever the fuck I want to talk to. I'm a grown-ass woman. You don't pay my motherfucking bill. You don't tell me who the fuck to talk to. Um, and that's law. I can go on anybody's platform that I want to. I can talk to you today and may not talk to you for the next six months. Dana and I haven't talked for months. Uh, I can't remember the last time I talked to you. I think around the New York rally. Yep. So uh, that's not the point. If there's an issue that I feel is urgent and uh, I know Dana is going to put it on his platform, I'll call Dana. Dana will email me. We'll have some conversation. And, you know, because we both understand this is for Rob. We're here for Robert. Put whatever personality shit to the side, put whatever differences to the side, and, and do what is in Robert's best interest. And everybody should be able to do that. But unfortunately, you guys, and, and they know who they are, they're more concerned about keeping division. And if you over here, you can't talk to this person. And if you over there, don't talk to me. This is not gang, crips, and bloods and stones and disciples we're supposed to be here for robert kelly only now you can like who you like go on whoever's channel i don't give a fuck about that but when it comes down to doing something to help robert or to protect robert we should be a united front because that's why we say we're here if I don't come to your rally, I don't have to come to your goddamn rally. Y'all ain't helping me share my videos, and that's okay. It's going to get done. But when I say, hey, this has happened, and I would here, let me tell you this. Because people say, why is she telling it now? And she must be adding something. I keep a paper trail on everything that I do. And I said, I the first person I contacted was Keith. Keith is the only person I need to contact because he's the one talking to Robert. I already told you it was being handled internally. We're not going to put that on YouTube. Nobody's going to come to YouTube. Hey, I'm, Robert's stuff is stolen. I'm not going to put that on YouTube. 
because it's, why would we want to alert the public that something of this magnitude has happened and it puts Rob in a vulnerable position uh, with his property? I wouldn't do that. That's retarded. Only a retarded person would do some dumb shit like that. And I consider myself a very intelligent woman. So the first person I called was Keith. Keith and I had dialogue, and we kept that conversation between us. Bruce and I were having conversation because Bruce was in the house. So between Bruce, myself, and Keith, we were trying to put the fire out. There was a fire, and the first thing you have to do is uh, assess the fire. How is this a small fire? Is this an inferno? Is it, you know, uh, the entire city burning down? You have to take the temperature of the fire, because I don't know, you know, what's what and who's who. Right. So we're doing that first. Then you try to contain the threat. We're not going to tell Don what we suspect. Bruce is not going to tell him what we suspect. Keith is not going to tell him. So we're going to ask nicely, could you please return items? And you're going to give the person time to get it done. But after one month, two months, three months, excuse after excuse after excuse, the, the fire gets bigger. And after you know I've given this person every chance, every opportunity, and it's being handled internally, the next step is the lawyers. But again, internal. We're but, not going to CNN. We're not going to TMZ. But his, is, but his huh? response to you the, the, the other day told it all. Wait, what? I couldn't hear you. But I said his response to you to the other day to your video told it all. Right, right. He what? said, why return it? Right. And, and y'all still backing him. The man got his shit, and he's saying, why should I return it? Which has been his position for the past six months. Why should I give it back? And see, and the crazy part was, when I first found out about it, I'm going to be honest, Sharon, I was retarded because I sounded the alarm. I sounded the alarm and people was like, why is Dana saying that about Don and Don trying to help? I said, yo, just listen to him. I have him on seven different platforms of him saying that he got all of Rob's stuff from the uh, from the um, signatures to the contracts on down to the um, on down to the passport on down to the driver's license. And then it makes sense because when he pop up on these platforms as R. Kelly and he jumping in these ladies' lives and he jumping in these ladies' inboxes and they thinking, oh, R. Kelly's sneaking on the phone to contact me and they send him thousands and thousands of dollars. Yo, this is crazy. I, I, can't be a, I can't be who I am to him and allow that to happen. Yeah, so at the end of the day, uh immediately bruce immediately myself called keith uh and that was you know at the first point of of discovery bruce contacted keith on his own i contacted keith on my own bruce and i were communicating and it was something that we were trying to resolve with the least amount of damage uh as quietly as we could possibly get it done right and I would have never said it. None of us were ever going to say anything. Don is the one that came out. And when he said his window was broke and two hard drives were taken, I knew he was trying to, um, what finesse. do you call it? Huh? <laughs> he was trying to finesse the situation. Or just create a, uh, a narrative, a scapegoat. Yeah. You know, create a storyline that would fit his end game. We knew what he had. We knew how long he had it. So for him to then, and we also know he didn't contact any lawyers. We also know he didn't contact anyone on the inside. So your first recourse is go to the police, get a police report, and then go to YouTube. You're trying to create uh, a storyline that fits your agenda. Well, he got mad at Doug because 
Doug wouldn't talk to him after Don and, and released a publication saying that everybody got fired and Greenberg and was just a puppet. Yeah, and just ask yourself, he's been saying that since uh, 2019, and no one has been fired. Um, he, he put out text messages. He put out things all over social media saying people were fired. You guys remember that? No one was fired. He has said from day one, he's putting all these things together to bring in money so that Rob could hire a legal team. Where's the money? And then he went on Kevin Terrell and said on a Kevin Terrell page and reset it again. That's what and I don't so, understand. Where's the money? Where's the help? Where's the he has had and you know he has had the stuff because when he first came out, he's showing paperwork, he's showing awards. He said, I have all Rob stuff. Where is the money that you were supposed to be securing to get new lawyers? It's been two years. Two years. Why did you need his masters? Why did you need all of the stuff out of his storage space and out of his studio? Why did he take that? He was not instructed to take that. No one told him to go get that. It was secure in a warehouse. Why did he need to go get it and put it in an insecure place, which is how the window got broken to hard drives were stolen, if that's what happened? And I don't... He can neither con confirm nor deny. I don't believe that. I believe that he created that narrative so people won't know the fact that, you know, Julius have a lot of stuff out there too. And... And I think that's what the problem out there became because Julius was under the impression that Don, for that Robert gave Don, and I guess Robert gave Don permission and to bring the stuff out there. And then I guess when a robber started questioning him and before he got booked, Julius was like, yo, what are you talking about? And then that's when it all spiraled out. So I think Julius just got tired and swung on Don. Mm. Well, I don't know Julius, and I don't know anything about that, but all I can speak on is what I know. Right. And um, to me, it's suspicious. Very. But for his fans, who are you here for? That part. Who are you here for? You're not here for me, so, you know, your opinion about me is irrelevant. Uh, you're supposed to be here for Robert. So if I'm telling you something, why wouldn't you look into it? Why won't you look and see if any of his stuff is on eBay? You know you guys have heard songs leaked. Everybody has been saying who leaked it. Mm -hmm. Who had access to it? Period. Dana ain't been to Chicago. Y'all like Dana leaking it. <laughs> How could Dana get it? Common sense. Common sense. <laughs> The person that got it was the person who was in the studio or the person that had access to laptops or the person that went to the warehouse. Oh, I'm going to get you here, Sharon. But I'm going to get you here. The same person that threatened Ian life over the new album. And see, I have to admit, I didn't know, like I was, I'm not on YouTube and stuff like that um, a lot because I'm doing a lot of other stuff. So I heard people saying music was being leaked, but I wasn't tracing that. I wasn't uh, following that storyline. I was. Yeah, I know you were. So, and that's why it's important to have many people because this, this is a tsunami and one person can't handle this. So it's good that people take different interests in different aspects so that when we do come together, we learn different things. I like the fact that I started talking to Larry a couple of days ago because I learned things that I didn't know. You know, mm -hmm. I, I wasn't following the stuff the way he was following it and looking at it from his perspective. So when you join and have a conversation, and that's all it's been is a conversation, uh, you get to see different points of view. So we can be in disagreement 
but still um, exchange some information for a common end goal. And the common end goal is if somebody has taken something that does not belong to them, it should be returned because that has nothing to do with the case. So Larry might be on his side of the issue. I'm on my side of the issue, but this has nothing to do with the case. Intellectual property was taken and it was far more than uh, two, eight, whatever drives, hard drives in the backseat of a car. It's bigger than that. Three truckloads plus stuff that was in the studio. So, um, Everybody should be alarmed and everybody should say, how can we help? How can we research this? How can we look into it? Take me out of the equation. Take Dana out of the equation. Take Bruce out of the equation. Take Larry out of the equation. Intellectual property has been uh, removed from a secure location. Uh, The reason I know Don has it is because Don told me. Bruce saw it. Bruce has given me video footage of it. Um, you know, so there's no, we know. Then on top of that, then on top of that, Sharon, not to cut you off. That's okay. Then on top of that, um, like I say, it's funny how the people that help get done indicted are now the ones cheering him on, but then more importantly, they acting like they know Rob better than we do. And I was the one that was that I had to convince Rob to, to, to even talk to some of these people. But now it's like I got stabbed in the back. Everybody else getting stabbed in the back. But then it's a problem if we get mad about what they're doing to hurt Robert. When I came out with my I support Don Russell video. Sylvia, Gucci, everybody that was involved in that New York rally just said, we have to distance ourselves from you. They didn't want me coming on their lives anymore. They didn't want me uh, being visible in the New York rally because they said everybody is up in arms because you show Don Russell support. That wasn't, that was September. September. So I didn't see anybody else put up a video saying I support Don Russell. I didn't see anybody agreeing with me. You know, I had a few thumbs up and a few nice comments, but the vast majority of people were like, she crazy. What's she doing supporting him? She can't be for Rob. Now that I'm saying this, oh, she can't be for Rob. Make up your crazy motherfucking mind. (laughs) Damn, y'all flip flop more than anybody I've seen. Sylvia, Gucci, you know damn well you said to me, you know, we we going to have to have you low key for New York because you're supporting Don Russell. And now you his biggest supporters, what has changed? What has changed? Um I'm going to tell you what I'm going to tell you what changed. Uh they got a petition in the name of Rob and none of that money went to any lawyer. Uh, but they also came and collected money in the name of Rob. And none of that went to Nicole. And Sylvia said, well, Nicole got all the money. Wait a minute. Now you're going to lie on a person who's not going to come and confront you on social media. And she's going to wait to see you in court. And then she's going to pull you to the side by herself. Um. It's just crazy because it's like out of everything that they do, Don Russell pops up towards the end. And and this whole big thing is if you look at who talks and goes after Don Russell about stealing from Robert, just sit back and watch the people that come and attack those people for Don Russell. It's crazy. And the thing is, why? Why why are you fighting for Don, and that's not R. Kelly. Why are you fighting for anybody that's not R. Kelly? Why? And everybody should ask themselves that. The only person you should be defending on here is Robert Kelly. I don't ask nobody to defend me. 
I know how to speak for myself. I know how to cuss your ass out, do a video, post that shit, and tell you your ass if you say some shit about me. So I don't need anybody to co-sign on that. So why do you all feel like you got to put up video after video? We stand with this person. You're supposed to be standing with Robert Kelly, period. And you know what, Sharon? Kimberly Nicole, she's heavily into law, too. And she just made a great point. And she said they probably invited Bruce to stay with them so they can record so, so they can record him for the federal government. Mm. I never oh. thought about that. Who said that? Kimberly Nicole. Read me that again. They probably invited Bruce to stay with them so they can record for the feds. Mm. What did Bruce tell you? He said there was no lock on the door. Uh, Don's mother, June, would tiptoe in. He'd be on the phone, and she would be standing outside of his room listening to his conversations. And I was on the phone with him most of the time, so that's why I know that's true, because he and I would laugh about it. We would be in a conversation, and he always put me on speakerphone because he was always working on the computer or doing something else. And then he would say, I think June is, is standing out there. And I would be like, is she? And then she would kind of hear him whisper, and then she would walk by, and we would start busting up laughing. Because he, you know, he he had his way of mimicking her voice and he would start saying shit and we would just laugh our ass off. And I'm the one that told him, now stop and think about it. You have an apartment upstairs. Don's apartment is downstairs. Why is there, why does the door not lock? Why are you creeping why, in? Why are you creeping in on that man when he's trying to be peaceful? Right, right. That's a grown ass man. He could be naked, getting in the, out the shower. Why are you just walking in? I said, she doesn't knock. She doesn't ring the bell. She doesn't alert you. He's like, no. But you know what, Sharon? Now that Kimberly Nicole said that, I'm going to put another spin on it. Maybe she was doing that just to get around Bruce so that way when a robber come out, she can let Robert know, oh, your brother did X, Y, and Z to me and said X, Y, and Z knowing how Robert feel about her. That's another avenue to so create. I told Bruce, I said, put a chair at the door mm -hmm. or put something at the door. So if she comes in, you hear it. And so he said, yeah, that's a good idea. I'm going to start doing that. You know, because the door would close, but put something at the door. Man. And she has to move so that you hear her coming. So, so essentially he was saying he had no privacy. Right. Right. So let me ask you this, because, you know, when I went live yesterday, I know for a fact that June Barrett came in my live and said what she said. What did she say? Um, she came in a live talking about Robert loves you and Don Dana. Don't do this. Robert. Robert has said that, uh, you know, Don and would do anything to hurt him. And I'm saying to myself, I know for a fact Robert ain't say that. I know for a fact. Ain't nobody talking to Robert but the lawyers and Keith. And maybe uh Joy, but um And the only way you can we, talk to Robert is through the lawyers of Keith. Right. That's the only way you're gonna communicate with him. So uh no, I don't I don't we know that's not true. Right. I'm just trying to figure out because, and before Robert got locked up, um, I talked to him on that day. And uh, when Alexis went there, um, Robert asked her, was there anything out there? And she said, no. So that's when they brought, um, but that's when they brought and belief out. And about 30 minutes later, that's when they bum rushed Robert. But Robert asked a question. Robert said, baby boy, if I ever get jammed up or go down, who got the most to gain? And I said, huh? And I never understood that question until now. And because I never was able to give my answer because I didn't know at the time. But now I see. 
if Robert is locked up, June and Don make out like a fat rat. Because they can go overseas and capitalize and then try to come back over here and capitalize. And Don is the one that told me Robert said uh, Dana set me up. What? <laughs> Remember I had started saying that? Right, right, right. And Don is the one that told me that. Just like I know Sylvia, the one that called you and told you I was sitting in a Trump lobby. What the hell? I said, oh, my God. But I never knew it was Sylvia at that time that told you that. Well, Sylvia is the one that she didn't tell me. She told we have a mutual friend called uh, Pandora. OK. And she told Pandora that you told them to lie. What? So that's why I was. Um, that's why you was going hard. Not only going hard, but I was adamant that you told them to lie because Sylvia said it. Yeah, and, and I knew Sylvia was your right hand, you know. And so, see, and see, and, and and a crazy part about all of this. And she's the one that said you were stealing money. She told she you that? that? She she didn't tell me. She told Pandora, and Pandora told me. I didn't have. I talked to Sylvia when you guys went to Chicago on May the eighth. She called me when she was at the airport because she was with Demetria Felder. Uh -huh. Sylvia was the first one to call me. And she was giving me play by play of everything that happened there. Uh, and she remember she went to the airport and her flight wasn't because Demetria Felder got sick of her and basically said, I'm taking your ass to the airport. And so she had to sit in the airport all day. So she was in the airport first thing in the morning, and I think her flight was in the evening or something. It was at 8 p.m. Right. So she was calling me. You know, I think we sat on the phone two hours talking. So let me ask and you this, because she blamed everything on Demetria talking about, oh, Robert rolled past. And then and then uh, Bug asked about Uncle Bug asked about Dana and this and this and then. And then, and she was like, oh, Demetria Felder was like, why do everything got to go through Dana? And I'm saying to myself, okay, because I was fucking with Sylvia Heavy. So I'm like, why would Sylvia lie? But then when all this shit happened, I had to backtrack everything. And I had to really look at it like Demetria Felder wasn't there where I was at when a sprinter, when an Uncle Bug pulled a sprinter and blocked off the intersection for the courthouse. Sylvia was there. So I'm so now I'm like, Sylvia the only one that had a phone on. So how did it get the Tracy viewpoint? And then after talking to other folks, they was confirming, like, yo, yo, Sylvia was selling footage. And to make it seem like you was running behind the sprinter. I said, no. Uncle Bug pulled in front of the um state court and blocked off all traffic and the police told him pull down that's when i got all the women and everybody else in a in a sprinter and then i slightly jogged down and i got in and myself that was at the courthouse right right but the way the spin was was i just appeared and i'm saying to myself but the point is she was she was in your camp. She was your lieutenant, for lack of a better word. And fucking me your, up the whole time. Your right hand. But she was p telling Pandora, you told them to lie about everything. And you were definitely stealing money. That's how you bought a car. So since it came from Sylvia, I'm like, oh, that that's, that's gospel. Shit. So... And, and but she was still riding with you. So when she comes out now and says, "I never knew this about him. This is all such a shock. Uh, this is revelatory," she was saying it two years ago. So, you know, I don't, I don't understand. You know, I don't understand because I know she. When you were going through whatever, she was the last one standing with you. I'm gonna tell you. When them folks came to my crib, I called Sylvia. 
Sylvia drove an hour and 40 minutes to my house and sat there in the rain. I was dripping wet when I came around the corner. And she's like, Dana, I'm going to take you to go get something to eat. Where do you want to eat? But I said, I just want to go lay down. Where do you want to eat? But I said, well, look, let's just go to Burger King. The whole time to Burger King, it was a short eight-minute drive. So what happened? What did they say? And I'm like, nothing, Sylvia. I don't want to talk about it. I mean, I'm just like, <laughs> like, what the hell? Like, wow. And then and then when you start, you know, saying what you're saying, I asked Sylvia, but I said, why is Sharon coming at me like that? And Sylvia was like, I don't know. She crazy. And she crazy. But then when I heard the audio that for that Eva Sylvia or Randa and recorded of Randa crying, talking about, well, Sharon, Dana don't want to work with us. And then they, why? It's a reason why. Yeah. But, um, you know, all of that is the extra, extra foolishness that right. is taking away from the focus on Robert. And it's taking away from us helping Robert. Exactly. Every, everybody has gotten into these personal, every day it should be working with you to help Robert. Yep. And let's do the work and just keep the personal stuff off of YouTube. But the reverse has happened. All the personal stuff is on YouTube and the work is being pushed to the side. Okay, I'm going to go ahead. Okay, I'm going to okay, go ahead, Sharon, and I'm going to tell you this. From the beginning, when when a Richard Allline called Kevin Terrell and told him Don got some work for him to do, right then and there, I should have said, no, I'm not going to fuck with you no more. But I didn't know what role that Richard Allline played until it all came out. And then I'm sitting here like, fuck. Like, they sent him in to infiltrate everybody. And once he got in and start creating a dissension, that's when everybody just start picking their poison and picking their roles. And then I became the mole. I became the bad guy. But I knew where that was coming from. Because the whole time, Cash Jones was hitting me, telling me like, yo, Don Russell about to plant this on you. Don Russell about to do this. That's how I was able to counter half of that stuff. Yeah. Well, at this point, you're either working for Robert or you're not. Facts. You're either trying to help Robert or you're not. Facts. Uh, you either, because the trial is coming up, so it's time for to get to fucking work. Stop the bullshit, stop the bullshit, put everything to the side. What do we do from this day forward? to help this man get out of this. Nothing else matters. Right. Okay, keep my name out your mouth. I ain't thinking about none of y'all. I don't care about you. I don't like you. You don't have to like me. None of that is a prerequisite to helping Robert. I can have a conversation with you and it not be personal. We can have we can sit on the phone and have a conversation about helping Robert. Right. You don't you don't need to like me. I'm not going to a barbecue with you. You know what I'm saying? You ain't coming to do nothing with me. How do we help Robert? And either you're for that or you're not. And you know, that's something everybody has to ask themselves yep. across the board. Across the board. So all of this, we on this team, and we don't fuck with them over there. Who's over there? What are you talking about over there? This is a court problem, a legal problem, and everybody should be able to come together and say, what are we doing for Robert? Now, privately, you can go do your own little thing and talk about folks behind their back. I don't care. But you shouldn't be putting that stuff online. You, you, you just shouldn't. Right. Because we're three months away from the trial right now, and nothing has gotten accomplished by the masses. Nothing. He's got 5,000 people over here, and I can't point to one fucking thing that was done that he benefits from. You know what I'm saying? So we got to step our game up. 
the game has to be stepped up. What can we do collectively to help this man? And not how do we like each other? That we already understand half of us don't like each other. That's cool. But this ain't about like, this is not a beauty contest. What can we do as a collective unit of 5,000 people to really go hard in the next 90 days to help this man? And it's got to be some big shit. It can't be no, you know, little dust level shit. What can we do to help this man? So let's everybody stop with the, I don't like Larry. I don't like Dana. I don't like Sharon. I don't like Kevin. I don't like, okay, but this is not about that. This is about Robert Kelly. We got 90 days to show the fuck up and show the fuck out. What are we going to do? If somebody has a rally, you don't have to participate, but don't bash it. If somebody flies an airplane over Brooklyn, you don't have to participate, but don't bash it. If somebody does whatever, why are we bashing? We say we're on the same team, but we're bashing each other on the same team. You cannot win a Super Bowl if everybody on the team is divided and arguing. When the Bulls played together, Michael didn't like Dennis Rodman. Dennis Rodman didn't like this one, this one. But they worked together for the common goal. Kobe didn't like Shaq. They worked together for the common goal. It's not about liking each other. You see what I'm saying? Right. Definitely. What do we do as a unit of 5,000 people strong to help Robert Kelly? If you're not going to help look for his intellectual property, shut the fuck up. It don't matter what you think about what show I went on and who went with me and why did we pick that and stop with the dumb, retarded shit. Sharon can talk to whoever the fuck she want to talk to as many times as she wants to. And your videos ain't going to stop me. So don't even talk about it. Either you're going to help look for his property, you're going to help sound the alarm, or go find some content for you to talk about. Either we're going to bust our ass in the next 90 days and get some shit done and show that we can be a force of 5,000 people, or we're not. But all of this dumb shit, and let's talk five hours about why Bruce went on there, that's the most retarded shit. And you're showing me it's not like I didn't know that y'all retarded can we stop being retarded for the next 90 days can we stop being baby's kids for the next 90 days y'all can go back to that shit once the trial is over with but can we be on our best behavior up until the trial until the trial ends because Robert needs us he does not need this dumb shit so let can we all agree not to bash anyone until the trial is over? Once the trial is over, we can go ham on each other. Well, we, we got two trials it. back to back. Well, no, actually, no. If you looked at the new layout and we have four trials within within four months. How is it four trials? Because you know the state still waiting on theirs and the state um in the first state case they waiting on the um the material from the feds from new york so it's like and the way they got it is is new york first they're from new york it's supposed to be it's supposed to be a down period for for, oh, for robert but the state is going to go right at september so then from september he got to go to state, and then from state, he got to go back to Chicago, and he got to deal with Leavenworth. Yeah. So it's like, and then from Leavenworth, he got to come back to Chicago, state, and deal with that, and then from there, he go to Minnesota. All of this is back to back. So when is when does it go, when is it going to be begin? At August what day? August 9th. And that's federal. Yep. And that's supposed to go six weeks. It's supposed to go six, but I think it's going to end up. I think it's going to go four. Okay, so that's going to be a month, and then immediately after that is Chicago State. Yep. 
in Chicago State, but they talking about uh, three weeks for that. And then from there, it's Leavenweather and Chicago Federal. That's the way it's going to look. And because he hasn't set an exact date yet. And then from there, it's going to go back to Chicago State. And then from Chicago State, he got to go to Minnesota. And then I wasn't even thinking. He still got to come back to New York and for faith. So we need to, you know, can we agree for the next 90 days? And this needs to be a unanimous across everybody's platform, across everybody's stuff. I'm going to do my best not to insult anybody, but don't. I'm going to do my best, too. Yeah, because, you know, I will come for your ass if you say something about me. So just keep my name out your mouth. That's the best thing to do, Um, because I'm a fucking beast. So just don't say nothing about me. And then, you know, I won't have to, you know, temper myself not to respond. So just keep my name out your mouth Let's for 90 days. You can say whatever the fuck you want after after the stuff. And then I'll come for your ass then. But for 90 <laughs> days, can we just be on our best behavior I'm down. and work as a collective unit of 5,000 and everybody bring their A game and and whatever the ideas are and let's get this shit done. If somebody has a rally, we pick the strongest speakers. If y'all want to take turns speaking, y'all don't have to like each other. But we should all be able, it shouldn't be your rally versus your rally and 10 came to yours and 20 came to yours. All of us need to be coming to a rally and showing up in full force. There should be a thousand motherfuckers out there. Like, seriously? Nobody should have five people at their goddamn rally. Nobody should have 20 when we looking at uh, somebody sitting on their live with 2,000 people. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Everybody work together. Every Liking each other is not a prerequisite. It's not a prerequisite. So whatever y'all talking about, uh, somebody killed a baby and somebody beat their woman and somebody ain't feeding their kids, let's put all that shit to the side. 90 days, 90 days, and only focus on the case, the charges, how do we represent for Robert? That's it. And I don't care who, we can tag team on these rallies. If he's going to be in New York that time, we need to have a rally every day. So DJ can do it one day. Dubosky can do it one day. Dana can do it one day. And whoever else wants to step up strong, you know, that's got a strong voice that's going to get out there. And if you don't mind, let me write some of the script so that it is law based. You can still say some of the stuff you say, but let's make it law based because we need law in front of these people. And then whoever has connections to get media out, you get the media out there, but a united front, 1000 strong. We don't have to like each other. Don't say I'm not going to this one's rally. And if he show up, I'm going to whoop his ass. This is a no fly zone time period. We ain't, we ain't nobody getting their ass whooped. Ain't nobody beating on each other. Ain't nobody going to insult each other. We're going to focus on the man that we all claim we're here for, Robert Kelly. And let's help this man because he needs us. It's been nothing but bullshit for two years. Nothing because, and I've participated in it. I accept that. I definitely but I, did. My videos are 15 minutes kicking your ass, and then I get back to work. Y'all on there six, seven hours. That's the difference. But damn, so, Sharon, you ain't had to get me in trouble, though. Huh? You ain't had to get me in trouble. We don't have to what? I said, you ain't had to get me in trouble. When I went to Chicago, Robert was like, What's going on between you and Sharon? What's the beef? I said, oh, shit, here we go. So, but I mean, he needs us. This man right. is in a cell and he needs us to show the fuck up. Right, You're right. So, you know, let's put the fighting, the arguing, the, you know, you know, let's put it to the side. Put it to the side. And if we can show a united front, all of us will participate. 
all of us will participate. I will be testifying in both cases. So will Bruce. So we'll participate at the level that we can participate. But um, we're here for Robert Kelly. So I would like everybody across the aisle to say, I agree. And I want y'all to put a video. If you agree, put a video out saying I do want to day. We stand in solidarity for Robert Kelly. We stand 5,000 strong in solidarity for Robert S. Kelly. Nobody has to apologize. Nobody has to say, okay, I'm sorry I said that, because it's too much to apologize for. We've been two years cussing each other out. From this moment on, for the next 90 days, we will not curse each other out, talk about each other, talk about anything other than the case, Robert, and what we're doing to help him. We need to be having flyers passed out, um, you know, whatever, in between rallies, like, you know, I don't know who's got a rally coming up, but before there's a rally, we can be passing flyers out. We can be sending stuff out over the internet to people. We can be alerting people to the cause. And everybody participate in uh, the, the wordage of, of what we send out. So it's not uh, one person writing it and everybody pissed off because that person say they smart and she trying to say we dumb. Uh, we're not going to do that for 90 days. So I will write it a lot and if you guys can participate, everybody can throw something into the pool. So, you know, I'll write a paragraph, whoever else wants to write a paragraph, and we'll put it all together so that it is a group participation. It's everybody's contribution. And that's what we get out to the media and to everybody else. And if we need some money to put something in the newspaper, we take up money for that, whatever we need to do. But we get it done as a group of 5,000 because this 10 separate groups and everybody doing something different, that, that's not working. And we see it's not working because there's nothing that has benefited Robert. Y'all getting lawyers fired and folks taken off the case. It's down to the wire. He needs his legal team in place. And another thing, do not insult his lawyers. Yes, they have some, some stuff that they could be better at, but you don't get people to raise to low expectations. Let's not insult his lawyers. Let's come up with ways to make them better. So here's what I need. Anybody that is good at putting videos together, I'm only naming malicious conspiracy and truth media because those are the two that I tend to watch a little more than others. But whoever else, I just don't know who's out there. So I'm not excluding anybody. Um, we need I, look at the way I did my docu series where I focused on the law and I focused on the big ticket items. Now I've covered, you guys know what I covered if you looked at it. Um, I've covered Me Too, Times Up, Mute R. Kelly, uh, Kim Fox, uh, Drea, Sparkle, Demetrius, but I've left a whole lot of other people out. So if you feel I'm going to do another video on Roshana. I'm, I'm going to cover that, but only do videos on people that you believe are in the case. And I want the video to be short, 15 minutes. So I want you to do facts only, facts only, law only. So give me, uh, for instance, who, who's in the, uh, do you think is in the indictment, uh, Dana? Uh, that I did not mention. Which one? Uh, like, is it Faith Rogers? In or? Chicago or New York? New York. Uh, Faith? Is it Faith Rogers? Yep. Okay, so for instance, Faith Rogers, what has she said? Go look for a video on something she said. Find another corresponding video where she contradicted herself. Show pictures. I think I saw, remember some pictures of her being in a hotel lobby, appearing like a groupie. Put that in your video. Whatever she's accusing Robert of, if you have anything, we have make it law based, law based. So we're helping the lawyers. That's the whole goal to help the lawyers. There's too much information out here. They can't possibly know everything. They can't possibly see everything. 
So the reason I did my videos the way I did was so that I helped the lawyers. That's what the videos were for, to help the lawyers. So whoever I didn't cover, you guys put videos together. You can work as a team, you can work as an individual, but it needs to be law-based. Pick and, and let's let everybody know, we don't need 15 videos on Faith Rogers. One good one. One good one on whatever you know about Richard Arline. One good one on whatever you know about whoever. Pick the people, but make sure you guys know who I didn't cover. And basically, I didn't cover anybody that wasn't what I consider an A-lister. That means at the top of the tier. So I, I covered the top tier. You guys cover that next tier of the people that I didn't do one on. Uh, who was the chick in Chicago that said she went to the court at 16? Uh, that Geronda Geronda? Case? Yeah, I didn't I didn't do one on her. I didn't do one on Faith Rogers. I didn't do one on the intern that worked at the record label. You know, it's so many people in this that I can't cover everybody. But you guys, we got time. Do a video on the people that I did not cover. Make it law based. The inconsistencies in their statement. Uh the savages are not a part of this case, so we don't need uh their stuff. They're irrelevant. Only the people that are going to be a part of the case put together a 15 minute video and make it law based. This is what they're accusing of. This is what they said. This is how they contradicted themselves. Don't make it personal. Don't make it emotional. Make it law based. You see what I'm saying? Right. That's how we help Robert. So we're going to do two or three things. The first thing. We're not going to curse each other out, talk about each other, do videos on each other for 90 days. We're going to spend that time focusing on Robert and the case only. We're going to be putting information together uh, for rallies, for the media, for newspapers that is law-based. And then we're going to be doing videos on the individuals that are a part of all of the cases. So we're not talking about anybody that's not in the Chicago, the New York, the Minnesota, state or federal, uh, because we're going to help the lawyers. And we're not going to talk about the lawyers negatively. We're going to assist them and help them be better. Does that make sense? That makes a lot of sense. Okay, so we're going to operate as a team and not as uh, a dysfunctional family. Because we've been the dysfunctional family for the past three years. We're going to come together and operate as a family that has been through therapy. <laughs> we heal and we get She better. said through therapy. <laughs> <laughs> and we, we all do better. Because all of us claim we're spiritual and we got God, but ain't nobody behaving it. <laughs> so for 90 days, let's put on our, you know, on our, our best behavior and, and, we don't have to like each other. We don't have to love each other. We don't even have to uh, want to talk to each other. The common goal is help Robert. No bashing, no talking about each other, no, you know, none of that. And can we all just put up a, a sign or something that says, I stand in solidarity for R. Kelly. That will let all of us know who's participating. That's it. I stand in solidarity with R. Kelly. Not I agree with Sharon Wimbush, because I know that's going, you know, y'all don't like that. So don't say that. Just say, just say I stand in solidarity with R. Kelly. And that will let all of us know we're coming together as a cohesive unit for the next 90 days, 5,000 strong. Um, and we're, nobody's going to break that pack. Yeah, because I, I I think that's fair. I think we can do that. Yeah, because now that color of change is back, and I'm looking at their leader now, and I'm like, oh boy, their leader is is part of the Read the Rainbow crew. So, and we're gonna have all that to deal with. And yeah, oh, probably. and another thing at the courthouse, nobody pull their pants down and show their butt to the media people. Let's not do that. Let's not do what, Dana? But, but I said, and let's remember for the court at the courthouse, and nobody pull their pants down and show their butt at the media people or the victims for that for that's against R. Kelly. Let's not do that. 
and don't contact people. This is a law-based problem. You're not going to help him by uh, contacting anyone in this case. You help him by putting a legal video together and getting it to the lawyer. Right. And, and you know, if you can get it to the lawyer directly, that's fine. But if you give it to me, I can get it to them. I'm not taking credit for anybody's work. I don't do that. My work stands on its own. So when you do your video, it's going to have your page on it. I'm not changing anything. But I can certainly forward it to who it needs to be forwarded to so that we, we're showing that, you know, we're not the dysfunctional family. We can come together over the next 90 days and help this man because it's crunch time. It's crunch time. And we got to quit playing these fucking games because this man is in trouble. Yeah. He's in trouble. I mean, these are some serious fucking charges. It's a lot. And he's got a lot against him. But we've got to come together. Do not insult his lawyers. Do not talk about his lawyers. Do not complain to his lawyers. Ask his lawyers, how can I help you? How can I assist you? H have group meetings on how do we help make them better? Anytime I've had a legal situation, I've helped my lawyer. I didn't, you know, I may not have had the best lawyer because I may not have had the money to get the best lawyer. But my efforts, coupled with my lawyers, made us win the case. So we can assist the team by being the sixth man on the bench that helps out. So that's what I'm asking us to do. Whoever's strong with the videos, uh, let's make it a team effort. Let's come up with the best videos. Uh, I've done all the videos I'm doing. So y'all, it's y'all, y'all's turn. Uh, I told you. You already did about fifty million of them. Huh? You already did about fifty million of them. I know. So I'm, I'm videoed out. I ain't got no more ideas. No more. You know, I got to pass the baton. Uh, and plus, I'm working on other stuff for Robert. So I need you guys to do like the names that I've, I've given you. So anybody okay. that's keeping track of who they believe the Jane Doe's are and, um, you know, anybody that's pertinent to the case, do a short video. Well, I know and I know I've done them. I've done one on Demetrius, but if you feel like you know some stuff that maybe I didn't cover, you guys have seen my videos. What does Sharon leave out? What does Sharon miss? Drop that in your video. But keep it 15 minutes because the lawyers can't you gotta realize they got a whole lot of shit. So that means synthesize your information. Make it concentrated. Facts only, law only. Y'all understand? Yep. Can we get everybody to agree and can we get everybody to do either a short video or a sign that says I stand in solidarity for R. Kelly? Can we rescue the dog first before we do that? Huh? Can we rescue the dog first before we do that? Can we do what, Tadon? I said, can we rescue the dog first before we do that? Rescue who? I'm making a joke, Sharon. Oh, what dog? <laughs> that might have been... <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> All right. Okay. Um, I told you I ain't on here, so I don't know what y'all talking about. Uh, let's just let's just get to work. This was, I think, a good live. Um, Definitely. I'm on Dana's platform because. You know, he the one I ain't mad at today. So, <laughs> you know, don't nobody do a video. She with Dana. She against I Kelly. Well, you know, you know they already mean, said that, man. You are O Cove now, so you know. Uh, Dana has a way of uh, putting shit. He can put shit to the side real quick. He can say some fucked up shit about me and then call me talking about, hey, Sharon. So, <laughs> <laughs> like, hey, shit happened. <laughs> but, you know, I'm going to be salty and I ain't talking to that motherfucker. But, you know, he'll blow the shit out of me and eventually, you know. So that's our relationship. It is what it is. Um, but I, I'm not the time. I don't hate any of you. I don't dislike any of you. Sometimes I don't like country shit, but that's me. Don't worry about it. it. It is what it is. But again, we're not here to like each other. We're not here to be friends. It's 5,000 of us strong. Let's stand together and get some work done for Robert Kelly. 
uh, and I hope that everyone agrees and I hope that everyone can put up a sign saying I stand in solidarity with Robert Kelly. And let's show that we're adults and let's show that we have some sense and that we do uh, have some God in us that we can bring to the forefront and help this man. I don't think that's unreasonable. And and don't bash Larry. You don't have to. Larry ain't out here hurting you. Whatever was said, let's squash everything. 90 days. Can we all just get along? You know, get along. That's all. 90 days. I don't think that's a big task. I agree. Tell everybody to put a one in the chat if they agree. If y'all agree, throw that one up in the chat. Throw some solidarity in the chat. You know, throw some, you know, I agree. Yes, come together. We are the world. <laughs> sure, <laughs> said we are the world. All right, Michael. <laughs> All right, Michael. Yeah, everybody put a world in they in they thing. We are the world. Let's let's come together because it's crunch time and it, it's just it's beyond pathetic at this point. It's beyond pathetic. This is the most ratchet shit I've ever seen. You know, let's stop it. Let's stop it. And and let's show that we have some sense and you know we we can do something good for this man. Are we seeing any ones, Dana? All ones. Great, great, great. How many people are listening? Uh, right, right now I'm at one fifty five. Okay, and all ones. All right, great. So that that's the game plan. We're going to be adults for the next 90 days. We're going to be grown-ups. Uh, nobody's going to curse each. You know, we're going to refrain from cursing folks out. You can save your little curse out for the, when the 90 days is up, and then you can explode on people. But for 90 days, let's let's be good. Robert only. That's all we're focusing on. Robert only. And let's get this work done. So I thank you all for listening to me. Thank you for your platform, Dana. That's cool. Anytime. Uh, I am speaking to Dana and Larry and anybody else that reaches out to me. If you wanted Bruce on your platform, all you had to do was contact me and ask me. So, nah, uh, man, Bruce might still be mad at me for back in 96. I mean, he was salty because people, you got to realize you can't bash somebody. No, I ain't talking about that. But I'm talking about in 96, man, when I told Bruce I'm going to beat his ass in basketball. And he told me, go sit my low ass down. <laughs> Oh, but I'm talking about when, when they, they had the press conference and everybody was, Bruce saw all of that. And so, you know, it, you have to ask yourself how sad it is that Robert's brother would go to someone else right. because the people that say they support Robert have, have dragged him, have bashed him. You all should be ashamed of yourself. I'm going to say that and then I'm going to get on my Christian soapbox. But, you know, you should be ashamed of yourself for the way you treated him. And you're laughing and you you behaved. You're the enemy right. to this man. So, hell no, he didn't want to come on your platform. Hell yeah, he went to a complete stranger. You're saying that man, and why would he go with somebody that bashed his brother? Why would he go with somebody that called him all types of names on their platform? Yeah. And, and fucked up his press conference and laughed at him and humiliated him and made jokes about everything. And all you did was hurt Robert. Everything they were doing was to help Robert. Yeah. Shame on you. Okay, now we go to solidarity. <laughs> now yeah. we can have some solidarity. But, you know, because I, I heard people who, ah, he go over there and Bruce over there, blah, 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 blah. You really expected him to come to your platform? You know, you can't insult somebody and talk about him and think somebody's going to want to talk to you. So it is what it is. Let's let's turn a new page. Let's be nice. Let's be kind for the next 30, 90 days and uh, get along and do the work for Robert. Got you. I appreciate everyone. Have a great day. All right. No thanks, problem. thanks. Thanks, Daniel. No problem. Okay. Bye. All right. Well, <sighs> let's try to do 90 days. <laughs> Mr. Wonderful said, as soon as this live over, it's up. No, man. I'm 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 nah, I'm a man of my word, man. I stick I stick to my stickler, man. Somebody asked me to do something, I'm gonna do it. If it's gonna benefit Robert. 
So now that we talked about Rico and Ms. Sharon Wimbush came and dropped some knowledge, dropped some nuggets off. Um, damn, man. I want to try a rescue champ. Shit. But, uh, okay. So I guess, at, well, at midnight, that's when the 30 day. I mean, 90 days start at midnight. You know what I mean? At midnight. Um, shit, why not start the day at midnight? Ain't nothing to it. Um, but what I want to know is, um, how many people and see in August, that's my birthday month, but how many people can, can, can I get to New York from August, from at least August the 6th? to august the 10th how that that that's my thing how many people can get there from august the 6th to august the 10th if y'all can if y'all can do that then fine because i got an idea but i'm not gonna you know i, I don't want to broadcast it but I got an idea, and I want to get what I, I want to have a core base first, and before we push it all the way out, because it's going to take everybody. With, with, with the idea that I have, it's going to take everybody. So let's knock it out like that. Can we start May first? <laughs> wait, wait, wait. When the thirty days start? The day twenty second. Um, I don't know. Yeah, I know they're trying to make y'all go back to work soon. Yeah, Nikki. Um, let's see. Let's see if you can email the dream team email or send me an email directly. Um, because New York is kind of big. So what I'm going to need is I'm going to need four. And depending on how many people that I have, I'm going to need four people for each barrel. So, yeah, so get your yeah, get your walking shoes on. And we're going to paint the barrels. Um, like, like I'm saying, I'm taking the funds that's being raised here. I'm taking that for the flyers. So that way I can get the fly flyers printed out and everything. And we just going to paint the city. And matter of fact, and we just going to paint the city. And we're going to hit businesses. We're going to hit establishments because you never know who the jurors are. You never know who the jurors are. So I'm trying to hit subway stations, but I'm trying to hit the rats in the subway stations. I'm trying to hit uh, a CN, whatever's up there in, in New York. Whatever's in New York, I'm trying to hit Barclay Square. I'm trying to hit... Ah, Sharon forgot. Hold on. She forgot to tell y'all. Hold on. Hello? Yes. Uh, you... Yeah, because I'm finishing up my uh, podcast right now. Yeah, yeah, you can call me back about 6 30. Okay, we'll do that. All right. Thank you. Right. Sharon forgot to tell y'all. Hold on. I'm going to get her to tell you because I don't know the full details. Hello? Sharon, um, I'm live. You, you, you forgot to tell everybody about tomorrow. What's tomorrow? Uh, the uh, DMX situation. Wait, hold on. The what situation? For for the DMX um thing. Oh, it's live. Um, on B. No, where is it on YouTube? I put it on my community page. Okay, so That's will you one. be streaming live so everybody can come there, or is it that like one single place? No, just if they if they go to DMX um. I was just letting everybody know you can go to at DMX and his bio if you're on Instagram 
and they're going to stream it. I'm sure it'll be BET. It'll be all over the place. But Swiss Beats has it. It'll be D- check DMX's social media. It- it'll be all over the place. But I just wanted everybody to make sure they know it's the 24th. All right. So what I'll Tomorrow do. 24th? Yeah. All right. So what I'll do is I'll jump on there and I'll stream it live from my page. Okay. Yeah. You could do that. That'd be great. Okay. Okay, thanks. Right. Bye. So tomorrow at 4 p.m., DMX funeral at the Barclay Center. Man, I wish I could. You know what? I wonder if I got time enough to try to see if I can get a flight up. But nah, but they, but New York is under COVID restrictions right now. I don't want to go up there, man. I'm trying to see if I can make some arrangements. Let me see. Y'all know. They're saying if you go abroad, you must you might have to have vaccine first. I'm not putting that stuff in my arm. I'm going to call and see what the restrictions are. Um, Pettyville said, no, it's not. No, it's not what, Pettyville? Is it any restrictions? Because, see, I'm trying to go. Because if I can go, I can go live from there. Y'all seen it live. So, there's no restrictions, Pettyville? You said no? Okay. Okay, no restrictions. All right, cool. So, when I end this live, I'm going to hop on and see if I can get a Delta flight. No, a Southwest flight out. Let's see. I still got that. I still got that voucher from when I was supposed to go to that D.C. rally. I still got that. I'm going to use that. I'm going to use that junk. Like, yo, I need to get up New York. That's only like a a two-hour and 20-minute flight from here to New York, from Atlanta to New York. So, I mean, it's going to be live tomorrow. It's going to be real live. Pettyville said, sorry, sorry, everyone. Good afternoon. <sighs> so, hey. What up, Petty? What up, Dream Team? Look, y'all know how I feel, man. I'm feeling good right now. So, since I'm feeling good, I just think, I just think, yo. I just think um, that people tired of seeing the crazy stuff. MC Outlaw said, Dana, the vaccine shot isn't bad. I got mine. Okay, well, I'm going to tell you like this. Go look at what the head of Pfizer said about the vaccine. If you don't die within two months or two weeks of you getting it, you surely cut your lifespan to four years of you getting it. And every time you get one of them booster shots, it cuts your lifespan in half. That's what the head advisor said. Who was A.W.? Oh, Survivor Angie Walker coming April 30th. <laughs> boy, you better stop, boy. But, but you know Angie Walker going to show up around your house in some pajamas you better stop and she going to hit that <laughs> she going to hit that laugh boy you better stop that's what they're saying here in the UK okay wow they I can't believe they really got y'all shut down in the UK though I can't believe that so look now that we know what the RICO law is and the RICO Act, and you don't need and you don't need a specific number, you just need people to admit that you know that's what happened. Um, I'm pretty much I'm pretty much down for. Oh, look what just popped on my joint! Forty dollars to fly. Hold on, let's see. 
let's see, find flights. Let's find some flights. So I ain't gonna keep y'all because I'm really trying to hold on. I'm really trying to do something different. I'm really trying to do something different. Um New York, JFK, or LaGuardia. Let's go to LaGuardia. Um, let's see, round trip on the 24th. 24th, yep. Let's see what they got. Um, I'm trying to do something different, really. Um, hmm. I don't like that price. Four fourteen. Damn. No, I don't like. I don't like the price. Uh. Uh-uh. Four fourteen. No, I pass. Uh. Uh-uh. Uh. So. I want to thank Georgia girl for encouraging me to tell my side of the story. <laughs> Fat boy, don't start that bad. Lee, he made you walk alone. So look, um, try one way. Yeah, I'm gonna see it. So look, I'm about to get up off here. I'll be back at 6.30 in an hour. And we're going to talk about this 16-year-old that got killed in Ohio. Um, I have some friends that think differently from what I think. But I want to see all y'all back because we got no, 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 no. We got to talk. We got to finish reading about R. Kelly. I forgot all about that. And we got to finish reading about the uh, the, uh, studio. Okay, so, and we're going to come back and we're going to talk about the rest of the studio. Um, so did y'all like what, what the way the conversation went last night? Or did y'all like that? Because the way the conversation went last night was great. I think. So tonight we're gonna finish it up. Um, ho- hopefully Malik and Brooke will stop past, but you know they was kind of sick, so we're gonna see. All right, I see y'all back, but uh, I ain't gonna leave the way I normally leave. I- I'm gonna do it this way. Hold on, hold on. I gotta do it this way. Um, I'm gonna go here. N- not yet. I said not yet. Go that here. We're gonna go here. Hey, I see y'all back in an hour. All right, peace. Shout out to everybody that donated. Shout out to everybody that's over here. I thank everybody that's over here, man. I can't wait until we all link back up in an hour. Until then, until then, until then, we're going to do it like this.
Oh, cruel, him too. Small life, oompa, oompa, 